Johnny Dollar. This is Mary, the operator at Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, Mr. Dollar. Yes, Mary. I had a call for you, but now he seems to have picked up his other phone. Oh, Les Wallace, no doubt. Oh, excuse me. Worldwide Mutual, mm-hmm. good morning. Yes, he is. I'll ring Mary? for you. I'm sorry, not you, Mr. Dollar. That was another call that came in and I left your line open. Oh, okay. Look, if Les Wallace wants to call me back a little later... Oh, here you are. I can ring now. Oh, hello. Hey, you're a bum. Uh, I beg your pardon. I said you're... Uh, wait a minute. Who is that? Are you Johnny Dollar? That's right. Good. Dollar, this is Jonathan Harmon of Worldwide Mutual. Mr. Harmon? Uh, That's right. You sound surprised. Yes, yeah, yes, I am, Mr. Harmon. I was expecting a call from Les Wallace there in your office. Oh, I see. <laughs> and that explains your reference to a, a, a big bum, did you say? <laughs> well, I thought you two were the best pal. Oh, we are, we are, sir. But he was supposed to call me early this morning about going down to New York tonight to see a hockey game at the Garden to uh, celebrate my birthday, belatedly. Oh, I see. If, that is, he could get away from his wife for the evening. Well, I uh, hope everything's all right there, don't you? What's that, sir? I mean about Wallace and his wife. And she's such a charming little lady, too, isn't she? Yes, indeed, very. But he's what not you... here, and what I called you about is... Oh, I'm sorry I interrupted eh? you. Uh, no, I guess I interrupted you, Dollar, but uh, what I called you about is this, and I think perhaps you'd better get out there right away. Yes, sir. About an hour ago, shortly afternoon, a client of ours, a Mr. William Willoughby, insured for some $70,000, was found dead in his apartment over at 19525 East Maple. Oh, what was the cause of death, Mr. Harmon? As the very unfunny police officer put it, when he called, it was a case of lead poisoning. There's certainly nothing funny about that. So I think, Dollar, that perhaps you'd better get right on out there and see what's what. Right away, Mr. Harmon. And if Les Wallace... Uh, continue... Fine, Dollar. Goodbye. Hello. Uh, Mr. Harmon? Hmm. I wonder what he meant about Les and his wife. CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the can't-be-so matter. Expense account item one. Two fifteen for a taxi to 19525 East Maple Street. There was a prowl car out front, a small group of thrill-seekers, and a patrolman with his hands full, keeping them from entering a smart new apartment building. When I showed him my credentials, he told me to go up to 5B where I'd find Sergeant Tommy Bravo in charge, and I did. Sorry, Dollar, but you got here a little too late. The boys just hauled young Willoughby, what was left of him, off to the morgue. Was it you who called the insurance company, Sergeant? Yep. See, I knew he had a policy with him. You did? How come? Oh, we'd been kind of keeping an eye on Willoughby ever since he moved back here to Hartford and put up in this fancy place. Why? You, uh... Know him when he lived here before? No, I didn't. Well, he wasn't much use to himself or to anybody else. Wanted the best of everything, but wouldn't do an honest day's work to earn it. I know the type. The chief even wondered there at one time if uh, he might have had some connection with a narcotics pusher that we nabbed and set up the line. Narcotics? Well, I couldn't prove it, though. Anyhow, what he left here was to get out from under a lot of bills he owed, that sort of thing. Mm Mm-hmm. And so then when he came rolling back a couple months ago, apparently rolling and dough, well, it just made the chief kind of suspicious is all. So we kind of kept an eye on him. But he stayed clean, so far as we could see. Just what happened here, Sergeant? No signs of a fight or anything like that? No. And the lab boys, before they left, well, Dollar, they, they figure it was somebody he knew pretty well. How come? Because Willoughby himself must have let him in, for one thing. Him? Uh, uh, him, her, what's the difference? But it was probably a uh, him. Was it? See those chalk marks on the coffee table? Mm-hmm. Lab crew made them, where a couple of drinks were sitting. 
Willoughby's next to that chair and the other guy's next to this one. How'd they figure that? Well, that one had Willoughby's prints on it, and this one didn't. Did it have any prints? They were all smudged pretty badly, except one. It looked like they were deliberately smudged. So they took the glass to the lab for good look. Anyhow, there was no sign of lipstick, so it must have been a man. Hmm. And he shot Willoughby? With a cannon. I'll find out for sure down there at the lab, of course, but it looked to me like it was a forty-five at least. A forty-five? Hmm. Yeah. But, Dollar, that's just about all we know so far. No other prints around or nothing. Nobody was seen entering or leaving. And if the man three doors down hadn't stayed home from work with a virus and heard the shot, uh, how did you find out about this? I got a call from Les Walters at the insurance company. Walters? Well, I should have said from Mr. Uh... Walters, huh? Yeah, why? Isn't he the one with that tall, good-looking blonde wife? Name of Constance? That's right. Connie. Why? Nothing. Just that I saw her having lunch with him one day last week. Lunch? You know, in one of those intimate little joints out on 44. With Les? Walters? No. What? With our now departed pal here, Willoughby. Then I remembered. Willoughby's name was familiar. I'd never met him, but he was the one who'd made such a play for Connie before she married Les. But Les do a thing like this? Impossible. Yet Connie had been seen having lunch with Willoughby at a quiet little place out on Route 44 where the chances were they wouldn't be recognized. Had Les found out about that? Is that why Willoughby was now very dead? No, of course not. I knew Les too well. He simply wasn't the type. And the police apparently saw no reason for suspecting Les, so why should I? What's more, there wasn't a single solitary clue that might point to him. Not yet, anyway. Item two, a dollar seventy-five for another taxi. This time into the Spear Building and the office of Worldwide Mutual. No, Dollar, I thought I told you that over the phone. Lester Walters isn't here today. As a matter of fact, that's why I myself called you about the Willoughby matter. Did Les come in at all today, Mr. Herman? Nay, no, not to my knowledge, but... Then he pretty much keeps his own hours, you know. Sometimes when he's out selling or calling on some of his clients, he doesn't come in here for two or three days at a stretch. Well, he hasn't even called in or anything like that? Well, not that I know of. You can check at the switchboard, however, if you like. But now, about this uh, Willoughby thing. Mr. Harmon. Uh, yes? When you talked to me on the phone earlier... Uh, yes, my boy? You said, or you indicated, you were a little concerned about Les and his wife, Connie. Well, you know how it is, Dollar. I... Well, in spite of the size of this organization, I have a real personal interest in all of my people. I'm sure you have, sir. The boys all know it, and they never hesitate to come to me with their problems, and I always try to help them if I can financially or any other way. I'm sure you do. They always tell me everything. Oh? Except where their wives are concerned. Oh. That's the one thing they like to keep to themselves, so I never meddle. So, well, yes, I, I can always tell them. Yes, I know them better than they think. But you have no real knowledge of anything wrong between Les and Connie. Oh, there's some little worry there. There's no question about it. But now, about the... If you'll Willoughby. excuse me, Mr. Harmon, uh, there are a couple of things that I have to do right away. Well, have you found out anything? I'm not sure. But don't worry, I'll give you a full report. Yes, I am sure you will, my boy. I checked with Mary, the switchboard operator... No, she hadn't heard from Les Wallace all day. But he usually checks with me, you know. I mean, when he doesn't come in this way. Excuse me. Good afternoon. I told her then where I'd be, and that if Les did Mr. call in, she was to let me know immediately and from where he called. I told her she was not to mention this to Les. The fact that I was looking for him under any circumstances. Item three, a dollar even for a cab out to the little apartment that Les shared with his wife, Connie. Well, happy birthday, whenever it was. Hi, Connie. At least I think I heard Les say you had a birthday not long ago. Mm-hmm. 
So what in the world are you doing this part of town, this time of day? Well... Oh, come in, Johnny. I'll put on the percolator and we can have ourselves a coffee club. Well, sure, Connie, thanks. Uh, Les around? Well, no, he isn't. Did you try the office? He isn't there. Oh. Well, then he must be out selling people insurance or something. Why, Johnny? All right, it's just that we talked about uh, maybe taking in a hockey game tonight, and I haven't heard from him, that's all. Oh. Connie. Yes? Um. But come in, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Connie, does, um, does Lewis keep any kind of a gun here in the house? Oh, now that's a funny question, especially from you. You're the gun collector. Listen, Connie. Have you added any to that beautiful collection of yours lately? No. Oh. Connie. Listen to me a minute. Incidentally, you know why he wanted to take you to the game or, or, or something, don't you? Why? Well, maybe you don't realize it, but he's been trying for months to find some way of thanking you for solving that embezzlement case that got the promotion for him. When was it? Last fall? Where is he, Connie? Did you know something? I'll bet he forgot all about it. I know I haven't seen any tickets around. Where is he? I'll bet he completely forgot to send for them. That's just like him, too. But he'll think up some excuse or something or, or something. Connie, where is Liz? You say he isn't at the office? Well, he, he, he did say something about some errands when he left this morning, but I, I don't... What's the matter, Johnny? You're acting very peculiarly, you know it? Maybe I, um... Uh, maybe I better lay things right on the line, Connie. What? Do you know a Bill Willoughby? Oh. Well. Yes. Go on. Oh, Bill, you sort of got a crush on me, Johnny, before I married Liz. And? That's all. Is it? Have you seen him since he moved back here to Hartford? Now, why should I want... Well... He, he called me a couple of times. Have you seen him, Connie? Johnny. Please tell me. Yes. Yes, I have. But these questions, Johnny. Tell me. Well, I, I, I don't see what... All right. One day last week, Thursday, I guess it was, I, I was way out on Albany Avenue. That's Route 44. Yes. A seamstress who lives out there did some work on a dress for me. On the way back, I stopped at the gas station and... Johnny, what's all this about? Just go on, Connie. Well, Bill Willoughby was also there getting some gas. He insisted on taking me to lunch in one of those little places way out there and... Well, that's all. That's all? Oh, well, he talked some nonsense about still being in love with me and wanting to see me again, but... Have you seen him again? Well, I certainly have not. When he started talking like that, I, I just got up and left him there. After all, I never really cared for him, and... Johnny? Connie, did Les know that you had this date with Willoughby? But it wasn't a date. Not really. Not at all. Well, did Les know about it? Did you tell him? What difference did it possibly make? Well, Les can be pretty jealous, can't he? Les? Of course not. You say that as though you don't really mean it. Of course I do. Well, where is he, Connie? Where's he been all day? Johnny. Johnny, how should I know? I think you do. Will you please tell me what this is all about? Will you please tell me why you're being so evasive? But I... Uh, oh, excuse me. That's the telephone. Hello? Why, yes, he is. Uh, it, it's for you, Johnny. Oh, Thanks. Johnny Dollar. This is Mary at Worldwide Mutual. Oh, yes, Mary. I just found out, Mr. Dollar, there was a call from Mr. Lester Walters. Oh? Phoebe took it early this morning before I came on duty. Yes? He was checking in to see if there was any messages for him and to say that he wouldn't be in today. Or I maybe see. even tomorrow. Or maybe the next day, the day after. Oh, and, and that call was collect. Uh, from where, do you know? Oh, yes, we always check. It was from Equity 30114. That's over in Waterbury, you know. I know. And it sounds familiar. Thank you, Mary.
Johnny. Now, listen, Johnny, will you please tell me... Later, what... Connie. Later. I went to a phone booth at the nearest gas station and spent item four. Forty cents for a call to that equity number that had sounded so familiar. I hoped and prayed that I was wrong about it. That it wasn't. Back off, gun shop. Who? Back off, gun shop. Gun shop? Can I help you? Uh, did a Mr... A Mr. Lester Walters buy a gun from you recently? Lester Walters? Uh, yes, yes, just this morning, early this morning. What kind? It was a handgun, a forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah, it was one that we... Now, now, wait. Who are you, if I may ask? Never mind. Not everyone is as lucky as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, who has an unlimited expense account. In many communities throughout the nation, though, high school youngsters are learning to conduct profitable businesses. They're learning by doing, running their own miniature business firms under the sponsorship and guidance of Junior Achievement Incorporated. To find out more about this unique project and how you may help it expand, write to Junior Achievement Incorporated, 500 Fifth Avenue, New York 36, New York. I still couldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. And yet all the evidence, every bit of evidence I had. Well, sure, it was circumstantial, that's all, every bit of it. But it all pointed to only one person, to my friend, Les Walters. I still couldn't believe it. Yet there it was. His failure to check in at the office the way that he usually did, didn't he know that would arouse suspicion? His slip-up on our date for the hockey game, didn't he know that would make me suspicious? Connie's hadn't been seen with Willoughby. If the cops knew about that, why not Les? And then Connie's evasiveness about Les's whereabouts. But did she really know about what finally happened to Willoughby? And the gun. A forty-five did it, Sergeant Bravo had said. A forty-five, the gun shop owner had said. That was sold to Les only that morning. All right, there it was. Okay, now what? Go to the police? Tell them what I knew? Well, let them find out for themselves. Why not? They had as much to go on as I had. Almost. It was their job to run down Willoughby's killer just as much as mine, wasn't it? Yes, and it was my job just as much as theirs. My dirty, rotten, lousy job. Why? Why did it have to be? Couldn't I? Couldn't I just... No. No, I couldn't, and I knew I couldn't. If Les did commit that murder, if, if, I made another call there in the phone booth. Sergeant Bravo. Uh, Sergeant Johnny Dollar. Hey, Dollar, have I got news for you? Real progress. Oh? So much so, the lieutenant took it right out of my hands. And, Dollar, you'd never guess who's the guy they've got a lead on. Wouldn't I? Ought to be wrapped up real pronto. And like I promised, I'll call you just the second I've got anything real definite for you. Are you at your apartment? No, uh, you can reach me at Les Walters' place. At Walters? That's right. Well, now, uh, what do you know? Too much, Sergeant. Too much. No, I don't know. And I don't know when he's coming back. And, Johnny Dollar, you just sit yourself down here in the den and tell me why you're acting so strangely. Now, sit down, Johnny. Please. Sure, sure, Connie. Look, would you like a drink? <laughs> maybe that would help whatever it is that's bothering you. Yeah, maybe it would. Well, all right, then. I'll go get you. Oh, now, who could that be? Uh, excuse me. Hi, honey. Les. I'm sorry, I'm so late. Les. Need a couple of business deals on the way back. Only a couple of policies. Les. 
Let's listen. And look, look, honey, I got it. The gunshot over in Waterbury. Now, 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 wait, wait, dear. Uh -huh. Let's wait. Look here. Isn't it a beauty? And honest to goodness, genuine, original, single-action army cold. Forty-five caliber. Honey, do you have to yell this way? Why not? Isn't it a beauty? Do you know who's sitting there in your den? Oh, boy. Johnny Dollar. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you didn't tell him anything, did you? No. So go on in and make the best of it. Go on, Miss, while I get the phone. Okay. Well, I, uh... Hello? I didn't expect to find you here waiting for yes. me, Johnny. Kind of spoils all the big surprise. Johnny. But here you are, baby. Catch it. Thanks, Johnny. Les. Well, uh, don't you like it, Johnny? Should I? Oh, now, look. After seeing that gun collection of yours, and seeing what was missing from it, and after what you did for me last fall, and with that birthday you had... Well, listen, I've been negotiating with the old man uh, Berghoff over in Waterbury for two weeks to get this for you. I... What's the matter, Johnny? Hmm? Johnny? Oh, yes, Connie. That uh, phone call is for you. Uh, Sergeant Bravo, I think he said. Oh, uh, th thanks. Uh, Johnny? No. Johnny Dollar. Well, it's all wrapped up, darling. Well, yeah? Yep. Prints on that glass let the lieutenant straight to him. Well, what was that? The killer, the one that knocked over Willoughby. It was Shorty Scarpone, one of his pals in the dope bracket. Broke down and confessed the whole thing when the lieutenant busted in on him. That dollar. Oh, brother. Oh. Johnny. Okay, now, what is bothering you? What's bothering you, anyway? Me? Yes. Yes, you. Not a thing. Believe me. Not a thing. Connie, where is that drink and we'll celebrate? Good. My birthday and a lot of things. <laughs> I can only tell you this. I was never so glad to be wrong in my life. And I mean all wrong about a kiss. Expense account total? What expense account? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a talisman. A good luck charm that proved to be anything but. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Mason Adams as Sergeant Bravo, Margaret Draper as Connie Walters, Arthur Cole as Jonathan Harmon, Pat Housley as the telephone operator, Casey Allen as Les Walters, and Sam Gray as Mr. Burkhoff. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Art Hanna speaking. Derwood Kirby's favorite program, The Gary Moore Show, on the CBS Radio Network. WROW Albany. Welcome wagon hostesses rate their work as the most fascinating public relations job in the whole world. In the United States and in neighboring Canada, too, you will find thousands of welcome wagon hostesses who do a vitally important job every day of the week. Right here in the Capital District, there are more than 20 welcome wagon hostesses, your neighbors and mine, each one a charming ambassador of goodwill. We'd like you to meet one right now. I'm Lenny Gannett. 
I welcome all the newcomers in the McGonville Gibbon area. I try to make new families feel at home. The basket of gifts I bring is just a small part of my welcome. I'd like to call on your new neighbor. All you do is tell me who she is. Call Welcome Wagon at State 59640. Give the hostess the name and address of the newcomer you know. She'll call on them with a basket full of gifts from civic minded businessmen. Call State 59640 for Welcome Wagon.